Good morning, everyone, those present here today. I would like to open here number two of the 185th ordinary period of sessions of the IACHR entitled The Situation of People with Disabilities in Prisons in Honduras. It was requested by the Centro de Atención Progresenio a la Discapacidad Caprodi. My name is Estuardo Relon. I'm the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and rapporteur for persons deprived of their liberty. Today with me are Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Commissioner Roberta Clark, and Commissioner Carlos Bernal, who is rapporteur for Honduras and for the rights of persons with disabilities. Today with us are, as well, the Executive Secretary, Tania Renown, the Assistant Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Pulido, and the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Muñoz. I would like to begin by greeting the state and civil society organizations, as well as I would like to explain the allocation of time. We will begin by giving the floor to civil society organizations for up to 20 minutes, and after that, we will listen to the state for another 20 minutes so that the ICHR can make the first comments uh, during the next 20 minutes. After that, we will give 12 minutes to civil society organizations, 12 minutes to the state, and we, the commission will wrap up the hearing for six minutes. I would like to thank you, all of you, for being here today. And we will begin with the hearing by giving the floor to civil society for 20 minutes. You can take the floor. Good morning, honorable commissioners of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, honorable delegation of the state of Honduras. We would like to thank you for this space of dialogue that allows us to present information on the situation of persons with disabilities that are deprived of their liberty in our country. Today, on behalf of civil society, are Gustavo Adolfo Cáceres from Honduras. He has a disability and he has experienced these poor conditions. Also, Karina Flores from Honduras. She is a human rights defender from the Centro de Atención Progresenio de la Discapacidad Caprodi. She will be referring to the conditions of the penitentiary system, the legal conditions, the infrastructure, the access to benefits, etc. Then we have an anthropologist from Guatemala who will be talking about alternative measures and best practices that have had positive results in Guatemala. Then Betina Hernandez, coordinator of the Ombuds Man Office for Persons with Disabilities of the Council of Human Rights of Honduras will talk about the actions taken by this institution regarding those persons with disabilities. Also, I am with Christian Joel Murillo, social psychologist and executive director of CAPRODI. He will be presented conclusions and recommendations for the state of Honduras and for the region. As an observer, Jennifer Matamores, that is assistant delegate of CONADI, will be here today. So let's hear first the comments by Gustavo Adolfo Cáceres. Good morning. My name is Gustavo Cáceres. I am, I went to work, but two military officers and they put me some bag in my hair and they punch, punch me in my ribs and, and they took me and they tied me 
But the fact is that I do not do any crime. I didn't, I didn't commit any crimes. And they took me in a car and they placed me a bag in the hair. And after that, I remember that it was a Friday. It was around four or five in the morning. And I was there. Well, after that, they took me again. And I have been experiencing so many things in that center. I look at the floor of the cell and there was no bed, there was nothing, nothing. And they gave me food and they brought me tortilla. I ate there, but I have no clothes. I wanted to go to my home. Sometimes I was given food, sometimes not. It was like that. Gustavo Adolfo Cáceres is a young man that was deprived of his liberty for 14 months and six days. As you could see, he has an intellectual disability. He has language disability to express his ideas in a correlative way. However, he expressed very well the conditions that he suffered from during that time. He was detained after the post-electoral crisis in December 2017. However, Gustavo Adolto, Adolfo Cáceres is an example of what persons deprived of their liberty and that have a disability suffer from. And this shows that we need to have a specific actions and protocols that guarantee the human rights of persons with disabilities. Currently, there is no petition, penitentiary policy with a differentiated approach for this population. This case shows the lack of guarantees in due process of law, the obsolete infrastructure of prisons, the poor conditions of attention for persons with disabilities that are deprived of their liberty. In spite of the fact that the law on the penitentiary system at a national level establishes that a multidisciplinary team should exist. However, in some detention centers, there is no team. In addition, education and training programs and sport activities in detention centers do not have the necessary accommodations to be implemented with persons with disabilities. And there are several limitations for these people, they have no access to information, there are physical and communication barriers, there are political barriers that prevent rehabilitation, there are no protocols to address the situation of persons with disabilities in the penitentiary system with a human rights approach. The public policies that exist today to address these conditions are not being applied effectively by responsible authorities. And this has contributed to the worsening of the issue. In addition, it should be emphasized that many of the persons with disabilities that are deprived of their liberty have to face legal proceedings that do not comply with the due diligence and due process of law. For example, in the case of Gustavo, the ex officio lawyer revealed that he was not aware of the case. However, during the proceeding, he showed no interest in a comprehensive defense for the victim. Uh, our colleague was sent to prison and we see that the penitentiary system has no specific protocols depending on the different disabilities. But for the actions of several human rights organizations, Gustavo would be in prison now. The justice system does not contemplate disabilities and the judge in charge of the case was, did not consider his disability as well. And this also affected Gustavo's family. Uh, his mother and his brother have an intellectual disability as well. 
But what happens with all those cases in which disabilities are visible and they do not receive the support of authorities or uh, civil society organizations? We see that these people are in prison as if they were just human bugs. Thank you so much for your help. I would like to give the floor to our colleague, Joel Simon from Guatemala. Good morning. Um, everyone, thank you for giving me this space. I would like to share the alternative practices that could be implemented to promote the well-being of persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty. In Guatemala, we have some practices that could be considered positive. We believe that penitentiary centers should implement programs apart from what is recommended in terms of education and health, there should be dignified spaces, that is adequate spaces with good services, training and education services, but also comprehensive training programs aimed at improving the psychological, physical, and emotional health of the inmates should be promoted to promote teamwork and in social interaction skills. This would pre promote social rehabilitation of the inmates. An effective model of social rehabilitation and research should promote the following, promotion of resilience and self-care through techniques of yoga and meditation. Second, promotion of physical and communication skills with alternative sport techniques, games, recreation, arts, among others. Three, advocacy to overcome stigmatization through aesthetic arts using the methodology of theater, drawing, painting, poetry, reading um, groups, uh, creative writing, among other artistic manifestations that should be promoted in cultural spaces in detention centers and outside of them. And fourth, job opportunities. Social reinsertion processes should be implemented in a gradual way, together with other social actors in detention centers and outside detention centers, through meetings with businesses, organizations that promote um, work initiatives, artists, civil society in general. In Guatemala, by applying a similar model through the project No Hay Barreras para el Activismo, which was implemented in 2016 to promote social research and programs, we've been able to implement the project in three centers of deprivation of liberty for adolescents. We work together with 20 adolescents in each center, and the program lasts one year. We have been able to find some impact at a personal level. For example, the participants' adolescents improve their personal ability and their recognition of subjects of law. They have been able to develop their artistic skills. This promotes awareness also young people recognize that the process have an impact on their personal trust and confidence. They were able to overcome fears from the past. And fourth, the young people who participated in the project became motivated. They want to participate in the process and they are able to change their sentences. These are the most important impacts that we have visualized and observed so far. I thank you for this time, and I would like to give the floor to Bettina Hernandez. Y no logramos escuchar, quedamos atentos. Can you hear Bettina? Mm. 
no sé si la persona está en la sala y I si no. I don't know if the person is in the room. Otherwise, Karina can take the floor. Thank you, Commissioner. We would like to give the floor to our colleague, Christian Joel Murillo. Good morning, members of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. In Honduras, we need to say that persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty suffer from exclusion since they are subjected to cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. We don't have public policies that are inclusive and there are no differentiated protocols that address persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty. Therefore, persons with disabilities cannot reinsert socially if they are able to leave the prisons in Honduras. These conditions are historical and are a concern. There is a lack of willingness to adapt domestic legislation to international protocols so as to create new protocols and to implement them. It is important to mention that persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty are a problem that the state has made invisible and has not cared about. And therefore, we recommend today respectfully that the commission conducts an in-situ visit to monitor and to identify the needs and the conditions under which persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty in prisons in Honduras live and to make a specific recommendations to the state. Second, we recommend the creation of an internal mechanism to monitor and support and systematize the complaints regarding the conditions of exclusion suffered by persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty. This mechanism could be a deputy office created under the operation of the Secretariat of Human Rights. Three, to create an alternative mechanism that according to the principles of Paris should be in charge of the Commission on Human Rights to monitor the progress made and the application of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Honduras. Both mechanisms, the internal mechanism, as well as this alternative mechanism should have the funds from the state so that it could be implemented fully and it could promote defective monitoring regarding the respect for the rights of persons with disabilities. Fourth, we recommend the creation of an interinstitutional group, including the Secretariat of Human Rights and other institutions including the Secretariat of Social Development. And we believe that this interinstitutional group should also include civil society organizations. This group should also include the National Penitentiary Institute that is the national institute or, or agency that manages the penitentiary system in the country. It is important as well that we implement campaigns of awareness and training for penitentiary staff members in order to transform the penitentiary system so that it cares for condition or promotes conditions that promote the well-being of persons with disabilities within the penitentiary system. It is important that this transformation allows to overcome the stigmatization and all the conditions of exclusion suffered from by persons with disability in penitentiary centers. Finally, we recommend 
the creation of educational policies and implementation of protocols of differentiated attention with an inclusive approach, including persons with disabilities and in a situation of vulnerability and also the implementation of a program of social reinsertion and rehabilitation for persons with disabilities covering all the dimensions of the person. We want penitentiary centers not to be just a place. We want these penitentiary centers to stop being punitive mechanisms. We want these centers to promote social reinsertion and rehabilitation with conditions that promote the integration of persons with disabilities when these persons are able to leave the criminal system. We want to have access to a differentiated justice and we want adjustments in the proceedings that promote a differentiated justice that promote the inclusion of persons with disabilities once they leave the penitentiary system. These are the recommendations and the concerns presented by civil society. Thank you so much. We would like to thank you for your time, for your participation and for your statements and information. Now, I would like to give the floor to the state for 20 minutes. Thank you, honorable members of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, distinguished representatives of the Centro de Atención Progreseño a la Discapacidad, representatives and public in general. Good morning. My name is Tomás Emilio Andrade, General Attorney of the Republic on behalf of the state of Honduras. We are appearing before this hearing regarding the situation of persons deprived of their liberty and with disability in prisons of Honduras. I am supported by a group that includes staff members of the Office of the Attorney General of the Republic, also the Secretariat of Human Rights, the Secretariat of Security, and delegates from the National Penitentiary Institute. The intervention of the State of Honduras will cover the following aspects. First, we will be presenting the progress made in the the national penitentiary system regarding the situation of persons with disabilities in prisons in Honduras. Second, the public policies and the national plan of action on human rights aim at guaranteeing the progressive inclusion of persons uh, with disabilities in prisons in Honduras and their inclusion in society and their social protection. Honorable Commissioners, the state of Honduras has assumed its commitment with international obligations, taking into consideration the human rights instruments that have been ratified. Also, it has an open, pol open doors policies regarding new human rights standards, taking into consideration the goal of the convention on the rights of persons with disabilities that has to do with promote, protect, and guarantee the full enjoyment of human rights um, by persons with disabilities and with the aim of promoting their respect of their dignity, the state of Honduras will announce the actions taken to guarantee the protection of the rights of persons with disabilities that are deprived of their liberty in the prisons in Honduras. And for that, I would like to give the floor to the Deputy Director of Penitentiary Management of the National Penitentiary Institute of Honduras, Commissioner Police Officer Arminio. Good morning, Commissioners. The state of Honduras has faced a huge crisis in the penitentiary system. In December 2019, the former administration declared the emergency at the national level 
in the penitentiary system of the country, requesting the army intervention. Um, also, we have worked to demilitarize public um, security. Our president, Xiomara Castro, issued a decree in 2022 that declares the national emergency in the penitentiary system at a national level in order to demilitarize it, to reinforce it, uh, to improve it in a gradual manner, to guarantee the rights of persons deprived of their liberty with a disability, to guarantee their physical and psychological integrity in order to promote their social reinsertion and rehabilitation. Also, the national police was attributed the role to take care of the penitentiary system. Persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty within the national penitentiary system are or account for 493 people. There are 15 women and the rest are men. Out of this classification, 252 persons have a physical disability and 241 have an intellectual disability. The current administration has promoted access to national institutions of human rights. CONAPRED, CONADE, the Special Prosecutor Office on Human Rights. So all these organizations together with civil society organizations have access to the system. And the office would like to present the measures that we have taken to provide the well -being, for the well-being of persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty. We know that they are a group of a special vulnerability. We are trying to promote a national police of rehabilitation and social reinsertion for persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty. This proposal was presented in May this year to get, uh, together with civil society organizations and justice operators together with the national mechanisms to prevent torture and the Pro Derecho program of the European Union, we have created a roadmap for the implementation of this plan. It's important to mention that this plan includes a differentiated approach, but also it considers eight strategic aspects and lines of actions, including the following, the reform of the penitentiary system, a new model for the penitentiary system, also, the coordination by the state to promote the penitentiary reform so that it has an inclusive policy with a human rights perspective, with a gender perspective, and also a national strategy of intervention of the penitentiary system. This proposal was presented before the Secretariat of Security and the Secretariat of Human Rights in June this year. Taking into consideration the conditions of the 125 penitentiary centers and taking into consideration the role of the national police and taking into consideration the reinsertion of persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty, we have different programs that affect all the persons with disabilities in the penitentiary system so they can have access to different training and rehabilitation programs. For that, we have made a study to identify the population with disability in the penitentiary system. The current administration of the Institute has presented for fiscal year 2023 a budget to guarantee rehabilitation programs and social reinsertion for persons deprived of their liberty. It also includes a quota for the assistance of persons with disability in the penitentiary system. We are prioritizing the unit of for the protection of human rights. And we have a quota to create a team that has expertise on human rights and on gender perspective. And this group will work to guarantee the well-being of persons with disabilities. The state of Honduras wants to share the preliminary measures adopted to guarantee the well-being of persons deprived of their liberty that belong to this group that is with greater vulnerability. One, the national policy of rehabilitation and social reinsertion of persons deprived of their liberty with a differentiated approach. This proposal was presented in May this year together with justice operators and the national mechanism of prevention of torture. 
And this was done together with the European Union. Regarding infrastructure, the Institute informs that together with the national mechanism to prevent torture, we have prepared a comparative report on penitentiary centers this year that includes domestic legislation and international protocols. It is aimed at improving the overcrowding and infrastructure of penitentiary system. We have assessed the current condition of the penitentiary centers, and we have identified a set of recommendations aimed at improving the current infrastructure and the situation and the conditions of population that is deprived of their liberty, especially persons with disabilities. Also, there is a approach that includes recommendations to improve the conditions of imprisonment in penitentiary centers in Honduras. It includes hands-on recommendations to improve the cells and to reduce the gap between the current conditions and the international recommendations. The Institute considers that those recommendations are a priority. Also, with regard to health, it's important to mention that the state has created several activities to improve the health conditions in penitentiary centers in spite of the challenges faced due to the health emergency of the COVID-19. Now, the National Penitentiary Institute has 220 collaborators and health staff members that provide health care in the 125 penitentiary centers across the country in order to comply with the recommendations so far. Also, we provide education programs and rehabilitation techniques for persons with disabilities. Now I would like to give the floor to the Secretary of Human Rights. Good morning, honorable commissioners and representatives of organizations and to the members of the Executive Secretariat of the Inter-American Commission. The Secretariat on Human Rights, within its scope, we would like to report the following. Initially, we would like to express our commitment and the commitment of our president, Xiomara Castro, to human rights and to the rights of persons deprived of their liberty and to persons with disabilities. Our agenda is a people-centered agenda that is based on dignity. We have developed the following actions to that purpose. The Secretariat of Human Rights has contributed to the promotion of the reform of legislative decrees 160-2005 that has to do with the law on equality and the comprehensive development of persons with disabilities through the bill to the development of inclusive or inclusive development of persons with disabilities. Then this is to guarantee the uh, that domestic rules adapt to international standards. We are guaranteeing the control of conventionality. This bill was presented before the Commission of Justice and Human Rights of the National Congress on September the 13th, 2022, as part or within the framework of the reform of the law on equity and comprehensive development. We would like to and um, to highlight that the legal framework is the one that presents barriers to the comprehensive development of persons with disabilities. We are also promoting different initiatives on education and training, taking into consideration presented before the state of Honduras. We want to promote education and training for public officials with an approach that prevents discrimination. And also we are promoting the application of a human rights approach in these training and education programs. With regard to the proceedings against public officials, for example, in the different hospitals, we are working to train staff members because there are persons with disabilities in these hospitals. We want to guarantee dignified treatment of persons with disabilities and of other vulnerable groups. Finally, it's important to mention that we have a policy on rehabilitation and reinsertion for persons 
we uh, deprived of their liberty with differentiated approach. This policy was presented before the state of Honduras by the mechanism for the prevention of torture. And the Secretary of Human Rights has taken the commitment to guarantee the application of this plan. The national policy implies a change. It moves from punishment and isolation for an period of time to a penitentiary model that is aimed at deprivation of liberty with the goal of guaranteeing the reinsertion of people and the prevention of violence. Therefore, we conducted several visits to penitentiary centers. For example, the visit to the penitentiary center Tamara in March 2022. We understood that there was the need to improve the guidelines regarding visits to centers to guarantee social reinsertion. Also, we visit Ilama Santa Barbara Detention Center in July 2022, together with CONADE, the UNCHR, and other organizations, because six people deprived of their liberty died in that center. So we believe that we need to improve the situation and the conditions of persons deprived of their liberty. And there were two visits within the national emergency. And in, on September the 25th, we visited El Progreso Detention Center and the Secretary of Human Rights delivered 180 mattresses for persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty and for women. Also, we delivered wheelchairs that were managed by the Social Development Secretariat with the support of the National Penitentiary Institute to guarantee the transfer of the wheelchairs from the capital city to the detention centers. Also, in order to continue to present the actions taken by the state of Honduras, we would like to give the floor to Nelson Molino, that is the human rights director of the AG office. Good morning, honorable members of the commission and all those participants at this hearing. Um, we have reported that so far there are 172 minors in detention centers and four adolescents have a disability. Therefore, we have conducted different actions to address these minors. We have a specialized protocols, taken into consideration the best interest of the child and taken into consideration their disabilities in all these pedagogical centers of detention. We also promote recreation, recreation arts, culture, entertainment in all these centers. We are improving these pedagogical centers to guarantee accommodation for adolescents and young people with a disability. We have interdisciplinary teams to guarantee individualized and differentiated attention, taking into consideration their human rights and their personal interests. We have also a specific um, units for there are lawyers to guarantee social educational measures that are not that serious for adolescents with a disability. We are including adolescents and young people with a disability in all formal and non-educational, non-formal educational processes that we have, and also to promote processes of social rehabilitation, taking into consideration their individual needs. And also we are promoting awareness among the technical staff with an inclusive approach. The Secretariat on Work and Social Security within the framework of law and equality and comprehensive of development of persons with disabilities in order to guarantee the well-being and the active participation of persons with disabilities in society has considered that it's necessary to have actions, personal assistance, support equipment, and auxiliary equipment and special resources that are necessary to guarantee the well being of persons with disabilities in order to guarantee quality of opportunities and to promote the well being of these persons, especially including rehabilitation and social reinsertion for this group of people. The Secretary of State uh, of Health has conducted several actions to guarantee the well-being of persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty in the prisons of the country that have a specific needs. Clinical attention outside the prisons is coordinated by the National Penitentiary Institute together with regional health personnel. 
in, and if necessary, they are transferred to specialized health centers. The Secretariat on Health has made a specific interventions in the penitentiary centers when there are uh, diseases such as HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and also there is a permanent follow-up on this type of patients so that they comply with their treatment and medication, and also to promote prevention. It's also important to mention that for the specific attention of persons with disabilities, we have a physical rehabilitation center in the Santa Fe Hospital, and we have a coordination plan with other comprehensive rehabilitation centers. Thank you so much, Honorable Commission. We are at your disposal, taking into consideration the allotted time that we have for our intervention. Thank you so much. Very well, thank you so much. Thank you to the state representatives for their comments on this topic. Now we'll go to comments on the part of the Inter-American Commission. First, I will give the floor to Commissioner Carlos Bernal, who is the uh, country reporter and the reporter for people with disabilities. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I will start by thanking both parties for open up, opening up this dialogue space, which is very interesting, on a segment of the population that is key and that requires particular attention and assistance in Honduras. First, I would like to post some very specific questions to the state as follows. First, are there any concrete specific plans to uh, remove from institutions per persons with disabilities? That is, are there any specific plans and policies with a specific timeline for disinstitutionalization. Why? Because that's the current human rights standard, which is that persons with disability cannot be institutionalized. They deserve a differentiated and dignified treatment according to which the function of assimilation into society by the sentence is of hard or even impossible compliance. And this is why institutionalization is not an appropriate means or space or environment for this person. Second, while that plan is being conducted and we manage to achieve this institutional institutionalization, that is to achieve a model of social inclusion in which persons with disabilities may live with their families or live independently in dignified conditions. Are there any provisional plans or strategies for the, this transition? Third, is there a plan or policy that is specific to provide support to families and support to persons who do not have a family environment available and that have a disability in order to go through this transition from institutionalization to this social inclusion model. And fourth, whether there is you mentioned this very briefly, but very abstract, in a very abstract manner, but are there any models to provide support in terms of education and training to join, to enter the market the, according to different sorts of disability, in, and I mean in this last stage of social inclusion? I know the executive secretariat uh, members and the commissioners will agree with me on this. If the state is interested to receive training and technical support on the part of the commission, that would be my question, support for designing and executing those plans and projects, because on our part, of course, there is not only the knowledge, but also the persons that can actually implement such training to raise those standards to what is expected in the matter of 
on in matter of human rights. So those would be my questions. And in your answers, I would like you to please state if you're taking into account different types of dis disabilities, that is not only physical disabilities, but also mental disabilities. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bernal. Now I'll give the floor to Commissioner Joel Hernandez. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Well, I think Commissioner Bernal posed the uh, pertinent questions, both in as a country reporter and thematic reporter. I would not like to add a different question so that both petitioners and the state may answer these key questions. But nevertheless, I have to mention this topic, which is the evaluation or assessment of public policies. Petitioners suggested some mechanisms of coordination so that visits may be carried out to detention centers to verify the conditions in which persons deprived of their liberty and with a disability found themselves. Also, the state mentioned an institution which I find key, which is the National Mechanism for Prevention of Torture. And why do I think this is important? Well, because it's a national structure that has already been created. It's autonomous in terms of institutionality and its creation is surges from conventional decisions taken by the state. So my first recommendation for the civil society is to be able to work with this national mechanism to prevent torture because its mandate is to visit prisons and to carry out recommendations. Also, I would like to ask the state if they have managed to complete the structure of this national mechanism to prevent torture. In the previous administration, there were some obstacles that hindered it into its integration. So I would like to know what's the status of that mechanism today, if it's fully op operational, if it has the necessary budget because they have a, a key role here on this topic. That would be all. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. I will give the floor now to Commissioner Roberta Clark. Thank you very much, Commissioner Ranon. And I want to uh, say good morning to the representatives of the, of the civil society organizations, <clears throat> as well as the state. And thank you for all of the information that you've provided. Um, I, I want to start off by really recognizing uh, the, the, the testimony of, I believe it's Gutavo, yes, um, when he spoke about really what are intersectional challenges of people living with disabilities as they confront the justice system. And that's even before conviction. So the whole question of how do you access effective justice when you're living with a disability uh, and when you may have challenges in communication and how does the state really, and that maybe that's a question I have for the state, what provisions does the state make for persons who are, are confronting the administration of justice so that they are well represented um, in their own defense prior to uh, even trials, I mean, upon detention, that's the first question. But I do acknowledge that this intersectional challenge also is made even more difficult by the systemic challenges which the penitentiary system in Honduras faces. And I think the representatives of the state you spoke well about that um, in a very honest way, the overcrowding. But of course, the commission has also commented in its, its other reports on uh, all of the issues that go with overcrowding um, and, and, and unsatisfactory and unsanitary prison conditions and the lack of sufficient attention to social reintegration. Um, so I also want to acknowledge that Honduras has signed and ratified the, the relevant American Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against People Living with Disabilities. And that's really a very good jumping off point. Two questions. The question that Commissioner de Bernal asked already, I want to ask about alternatives to incarceration. Um, within the justice system and how far has the state gone in its thinking on the legislative reform needed to address what 
is well described as differentiated justice. So differentiated justice across the justice cycle from detention and policing all the way to, to incarceration. What the, one of the states, I would like to understand better the state's approach to that. And my second question, you speak about the representative states speak a lot about inter, inter institutional groups and also acknowledging the need for training of our penitentiary staff and so on. How are organizations representing people living with disabilities engaged in all of this state reform? Are they participating and are they being fully engaged in the reforms? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner Clark. I'll give the floor to the special rapporteur, Soledad Garcia Munoz, if she has any questions. Thank you very much, Commissioner, uh, Vice President. Uh, special greetings to the whole commission, to the representatives of the state, to the civil society, and to the executive secretariat. Uh, a very brief comment in line with the very important questions that have been posed by the uh, country rapporteur. I would like to know if the state has adopted any concrete measures to protect the health and the specific needs as regards food for this population. Also encouraging uh, the identification of concrete measures because this is a very specific population. Thank, thank you very much. Very well. Uh, as from me, I would like to start by saying something that's very important. It's very important that we have had this opportunity to help to host this hearing in the in this 185th period of sessions, because sometimes there is a difficulty to make visible the situation of persons with disabilities. This is something that within vulnerable populations, sometimes their specific situation is not made visible as with the magnitude that is necessary. And even so, if these persons are deprived of the liberty. Today at this hearing, there was an intervention by the civil society where they said that they needed an improvement for a communication means to have a proper dialogue between authorities and, and civil society representatives and, all, and also to the possibility to have a specific um, table discussion. So my question would be for the state, what do you think about this proposal of creating this such uh, dialogue group or whether there is a, a group that is meeting frequently. I would like to know what what is that the reaction to that comment by the civil society. So there have been several questions. We will now go to this other part of this hearing, which is to be able to hear the civil society and the state if for any reason any of the questions that the state must answer uh, are not responded because there is no enough time, you can send additional information to the commission by writing. So this is the, the end of this part. And I give the floor now to the civil society representatives. Both parties can have 13 minutes to to explain their point of view. So I give the floor first to the civil society and then to the representatives of the state. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Inter-American Commission and the state of Honduras. Thank you very much for giving us the floor once again. Right now, before answering some of the questions posed by the commission, we would like to give the floor to Bettina Hernandez from the National Commission on Human Rights, who had not had the opportunity to intervene before because she had some technical issues. Go ahead, Bettina. 
Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here. The National Commission on Human Rights in Honduras is the National Con uh, Commission, Independent Commission under the principle of Paris that is uh, aimed at protecting human rights of the whole population with the emphasis on vulnerable groups such as persons with disabilities and uh, persons deprived of their liberty. The CONADE has uh, presented several recommendations to the state so that it implements an administration to manage pe pe penitentiary centers. We observe no advancement, no progression on this, and they have not complied with the Inter-American Commission's recommendations on their, on their country report and other reports from 2019. So our recommendation, uh, it's the recommendation on the Commission on Persons with Disabilities of the United Nations is to protect uh, access to justice of persons with disabilities by providing support as they need and also the concern that persons that are not cannot be criminalized for the commission of a crime can be object to uh, detention indefinitely. We urge the state to review cases of persons referred to psychiatric hospitals where they are still detained in different uh, penitentiary centers. According to information provided by the penitentiary centers, more than 500 people are deprived of their liberty in 25 penitentiary centers. Uh, 90, uh, 93 persons are men and 7% are women. They, half of them have uh, physical disabilities and there are other kinds of disabilities, but this figure may increase if we I also take into account the disability of uh, lack of uh, vision. Also, there have been, uh, there's an urge to conduct regular investigations and inspections of penitentiary centers. There are materials also to provide inclusion for this uh, population. In the report of 2019, as regards the first part of 2022, there have more than 2,000 complaints presented by persons with disabilities and their families. 11 of those, 11% 11 of those were presented by women. The vulnerations that have been reported are abuse of authority, torture, maltreatment, uh, harassment, and the delay of uh, justice. This is added to overcrowding and the lack of basic supplies. In this complaint, we see the same infringements presented by the rest of the persons deprived of their liberty, plus a lack of uh, physical access to uh, communication. It's very concerning the infrahuman conditions suffered by persons in La Isla in the National Penitentiary Center, Penemas. The CONADE supports and recommends the state to review what has been presented by the Special Rapporteur of the United Nations on Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Catalina de Bandas, in her report before the Council of Human Rights. The deprivation of liberty on the basis of disability has been a violation of human rights at a global massive scale. It's not a necessary evil, but actually a consequence of the failure of the part of states to guarantee their uh, obligations the, and the rights of persons with disabilities. Thank you very much. After having heard uh, Bettina, we give the floor now to Cristian Joel Murillo. In our report presented two weeks ago to the commission, we recommended the integration of local boards from CONAPREM aimed at persons with disabilities deprived of their liberty as we already have women boards, LGBTI boards, etc. We also considered it's important to have 
uh, interagency board where through the National Institute, Penitentiary Institute, who manages penitentiary matters and the Secretariat for Human Rights and Social Development and organizations in charge of managing public affairs for people with disabilities and also the establishment of CONAPRE and the and civil society organizations, we think we can underpin and, and try to transform the penitentiary system to promote access to differentiate the justice, to incorporate adjustments in procedures and, and above all to create a policy of differentiated assistance of persons with disabilities deprived of their liberties that may facilitate a, and allow precisely this, the non-institutionalization of persons with disabilities as a measure for an effective assimilation into society and rehabilitation with persons for persons with disabilities in the system, in the public penitentiary system. Thank you very much. Also, it's important to mention the most significant progression is recognition, to be able to speak about the advancements of our country in this new uh, public administration. It's key to us that we speak of acknowledgement, to acknowledge the violation of human rights rights is fundamental to deny these violations in the framework of the post electoral uh, environment is to us uh, key it's important to recognize this to recognize victims as they are as we are now presenting gustavo as the person that has lived firsthand all this situations however this is the first advancement not only to think of gustavo but of all penitentiary centers in honduras and the conditions that are suffered by persons with disabilities there's another example a blind person may be detained or incarcerated for 15 years but this blind person during 15 years we have we are able to see that they have not received any education or vital development towards rehabilitation or assimilation into the labor market. A deaf person deprived of their liberty in all penitentiary centers suffer the same thing. The plans for literacy do not adequate, are not ad uh, adopted to include a sign language, for example. So it's very concerning not with the intent to to judge anyone but actually as civil society we aim at contributing at giving input and really see our strengths so that we can build public policies for penitentiary centers with a differentiated approach reinsertion and rehabilitation progress that may be efficient to each type of disabilities. This is the ultimate goal of this hearing, to have support and reparation for victims, because it's not only the, about the moment in which the person is detained and uh, goes through due process or are incarcerated. It's also about the life of these persons with disabilities before, during, and after this moment. So we are pointing this out. in in view of the recognition. This is the first uh, advancement, that, the first step, step forward we need to give as a country. We're completely delayed here. So we give the floor for two minutes to Bettina Hernandez. On behalf of the ombudspersons uh, of the persons with disabilities and Joel Simon with the what of Guatemala, and we will be wrapping up the participation of the civil society. Again, thank you. Before, above all, what we want to do is to express and share with you some context. We have been working together with Caprodi for some time so far, 
It's been an excellent work. We've received a lot of support and we have collaborated in many aspects, including the development of inclusive material that we prepare for deaf persons, for blind persons, for persons with visual impairment, etc. And we would like to say that we support the proposal presented by Caprodi and especially the, we support the proposal regarding the inter institu interinstitutional group. I think it's an interesting proposal that should be implemented. Also, the development of policies and programs that they have proposed. And we are awaiting for the reply of the state and we hope that it's positive. Thank you so much. I'd like to take the floor. Um, personally speaking, I'd like to, it's important to say that it's important that the state of Honduras is presented different alternatives to advance regarding the matter of human rights, especially in terms to, in, in, with regard to persons with disabilities. However, taking into consideration what Commissioner Estuardo Ralón was saying, I think it's important that civil society organizations should be taken into consideration because we have contributed to these struggles and to face some of the challenges that we are facing as a society. So I think that involving civil society organizations is fundamental to succeed in the development of public policies and progress addressing persons with disabilities. And as a citizen of Guatemala, I am also a member of civil society organizations and I've been supported the programs of CAPRODI. So I'm at your disposal and I would like to congratulate all of you for the progress made. Thank you so much. Thank you. We would like to thank you for respecting the time allotted. And now we would like to give the floor to the state for 13 minutes to react and to answer the questions. Again, good afternoon. And with regard to the questions formulated by the commissioners, Clark Bernal and Soledad Garcia Munoz, I'd like to give the floor to the person in church of the actions conducted by the state of Honduras to guarantee the rights established in the Convention on Persons with Disabilities. Therefore, I would like to give the floor to the representative of the National Penitentiary Institute and then to the Secretariat of Human Rights. Good morning with regard to the questions posed by the commissioners and to the creation of this interinstitutional group. I'd like to say that currently the state and the National Penitentiary Institute have an interinstitutional group. We have the health penitentiary group that involves the National Penitentiary Institute and some civil society organizations participate in that group together with the Health sec Secretariat. And we provide monitoring and oversight of the different health related activities in the system. And the state provides for health, medication, and supplies with different elements that improve the lives of persons deprived of their liberty. The Institute, as such, has launched some tenders to continue strengthening this system. The President of the Republic has also supported 
a plan to promote social reinsertion. The Institute has received some funds to continue strengthening and to provide dignity to persons deprived of their liberty. Um, once the national police was included in the penitentiary system after the emergency decree, um, we had some funding issues. Human rights organizations from the state and from civil society have had access to the national police and we have participated together in several events. And we are always waiting for the feedback of these organizations. We have this open doors policy. And CONADE, CONAPREP, all these agencies send to us their recommendations. Some of those recommendations are urgent and for some time is needed. But on behalf of the National Institute, I would like to say that we are always open and willing to improve. And we want the penitentiary system to improve every day. We also are working on these social re-inclusion, reinsertion, and rehabilitation policy. And we are working with some civil society organizations and agencies of the state to implement uh, some of the uh, constitutional standards so that persons with disabilities benefit because we know that there are many people with disabilities or that are under preventive detention. So we are working on a pardon so that the state can reduce the overcrowding in prison so that these people can be released and enjoy their freedom. And this has to do with the question made by Bernal that has to do with the institutionalization of persons deprived of their liberty. In order to verify the situation of persons deprived of their liberty, the Secretary of Human Rights um, had a meeting with civil society organizations in order to choose a commissioner appointed by civil society organization and two members of the CONAPRED. Sandra Rodriguez was appointed commissioner and Ana Ferreira and Delma Ordonez that belongs to the Association of Family Members of Persons Deprived of Their Liberty. These are members of the CONAPRED and also, Argentina Bayer and Melissa Escoto were already members of the CONAPRED, and therefore, the CONAPRED is fully integrated. Now, I'd like to reiterate the invitation of President Xiomara Castro to visit, so that the Commission can visit Honduras to verify the situation on human rights, we would like to continue a joint work with the Inter-American Commission in terms of human rights and specific aspects to address the situation of groups in a situation of a special vulnerability. The Secretariat on Human Rights is working to create a new policy and action plan in terms of human rights with an emphasis on the attention of groups in a situation of vulnerability. Thank you. One of the biggest commitments of the state is continuing with these measures, but we are also working 
Y la voy a unir su molina continuará. With the improve these goals. One of my colleagues will pre present future plans. Thank you. AG. With regard to the comments made by Commissioner Bernal, with regard to what has been presented on the projects of the Secretariat of Labor and Social Security in order to guarantee equality of opportunities for everyone and taking into consideration the situation of persons deprived of their liberty, including practices to promote their social rehabilitation, we would like to thank the offer of the Inter-American Commission <clears throat> to provide support with the trainings and the technical assistance that can be provided to us. We believe that it's very important so that we can make these projects a reality. I would be great that those trainings should include components related to the institutionalization. This will help us to find new ways of adapting our domestic rules to the inter-American standards to guarantee the protection of these groups, <clears throat> including persons with disabilities, and especially persons deprived of their liberty. <clears throat> We would like to thank and we will share with the Secretary of Human Rights our message and our needs so that we have the support of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights throughout all these processes. Thank you, Mr. Molina, Honorable Commissioners, representatives of civil society and of the Centro de Atención. Um, who requested the hearing. Um, we would like to thank you because we are working at the National Congress to prepare initiatives with a focus on vulnerable groups and on persons with disabilities. Persons with disabilities play a key role in our state policies. So taking into consideration the actions listed during the hearing, you can see that the state of Honduras is committed to persons with disabilities and to pay specific attention to persons deprived of their liberty and with disabilities. We are working um, considering the important role that human rights defenders have for a country. And we want to focus on persons deprived of their liberty that have a disability that fight every day for dignity, their equality and their inclusion in our society. So we would like to thank this space and we will continue to work in together with you. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you to the state representatives we have taken notes of what you have just said. We have a few minutes before closing. So I would like to ask my colleagues, commissioners, the special rapporteur, if you have any comments before wrapping up the hearing. First vice president, can I take the floor? Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank the presence of the state of Honduras and their openness in the last part of this conversation so that the ICHR can visit and monitor the situation of human rights in the state of Honduras to provide training regarding the situation of persons with disability deprived of their liberty. Some months ago, we agreed upon a roadmap ahead as well. I would like to recognize the huge work that civil, civil society organizations are doing in this matter, because there is an intersection of discrimination types that affect people, because here we have deprivation of liberty with a complex elements that are disabilities. And I'd like to know 
if civil society organizations or the state have an assessment about how many people are we talking about? Because what's important is to understand the reality and what we are dealing with. As the representatives of civil society have said, having the number of persons affected will help make this issue visible. So I'd like for the state to know that the executive secretariat and the plenary of the Inter-American Commission are available to conduct a visit and to provide the technical assistance in terms of persons deprived of their liberty. And I would like to know if civil society organizations have an approximate estimate of the persons affected to know how many people, how many persons with disabilities are deprived of their liberty as well. And we would like to thank you for your work. Thank you so much, First Vice President. Thank you, Secretary. I don't know if my colleagues would like to ask any other questions, a special rapporteur. I have some comments myself, but first I would like to know if my colleagues would like to have the floor. Commissioner Bernal. Thank you so much, Vice President. I'd like to thank the representatives of the state for their openness. And for sure, you have our support to improve your policies. Thank you. If no other commissioner would like to take the floor, I would like to mention some aspects regarding the information that was requested during the hearing. You can send that information to us in writing. Uh, your, the information that you provide us with is very important, it's very relevant, as well as the information requested by civil society organizations. I'm sure that due to the huge work that you are conducting, probably you have that estimate that was requested as well as other, as well as other figures that are relevant for the work of the commission. I'd like to mention some specific aspects as well. First, a month ago, the commission visited Honduras in the field and we realized the willingness to transform the approach of the penitentiary system by complying standards and human rights. And your focus on persons deprived of their freedom, especially persons with disabilities. Commissioner Bernal said that the commission could provide support and technical assistance to improve different aspects regarding the penitentiary system as mentioned throughout the hearing. Some aspects have to do with perfectioning and implementing some new channels for dialogue with civil society um, so that this public policy is implemented with the support of several institutions that are working in this matter. And there are other aspects that have to do with the training and the education that should be guaranteed in these institutions to conduct an specialized work regarding this vulnerable group. So again, we would like to repeat that the commission is available and at your disposal. The state also show their openness in this matter. We hope that these initiatives can be materialized, realized, and I hope that this technical assistance is provided. I think it would be a great support to implement some of the actions that you have enlisted. Another important matter that I would like to mention is that the IACHR is preparing a thematic report on the situation of persons with disabilities in the region. So the information that you provide us with 
is a very important um, contribution that the Commission needs to improve and enrich the report that it's working on. And I also would like to mention that the development of the thematic report is aimed at providing more visibility to persons with disabilities and to provide the states with a set of recommendations and standards and best practices so that the states can address this matter in a better way. So without further ado, I would like to thank civil society, to thank those people who have shared with us their perspective, their experiences and all the information. And I would like to thank the representatives of the state because apart from the answers and the information that they have provided, they have expressed their openness so that the commission can provide technical assistance, something that has been discussed in recent months. Thank you so much. And with that, I'd like to adjourn this hearing. Greetings and hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Hasta luego. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Gracias a todos. Hasta luego. Gracias también a los representantes.